Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Tautronics TT-CD06 dash cam. Uh, it's a $100 dash cam, and it's probably actually one of the best $100 dash cams I've had a chance to test and review so far. Uh, all of the basic core key stuff that you would need in a dash cam, it does a good job with it. It doesn't have a bunch of crazy bells and whistles, but all the key functionality that really anybody would need, it does a good job. And what I mean by that is the video quality of the camera is actually pretty awesome. It shoots not just at 1080p, full HD, but actually even higher resolution, so you got a lot of detail coming out of here. It looks good in the daytime and at night. You'll also see on the back here, it's got uh, an LCD. It makes it really easy to see what's going on and actually frame and position the camera. Um, and probably one of the biggest standout features is actually the design and interface of the camera. You see, um, it's got a number of different buttons here on the bottom that you can use to start and stop recording. Uh, if you see anything interesting going on ahead and you want to actually snap a picture, you can just press this button right here and it'll snap a picture for you, which is really nice. Uh, if you want to mute your microphone or unmute, uh, you can press this button right here. You can actually switch in and out of HDR mode by pressing pressing and holding this button here. And then if there's anything going on ahead of you and you wanna do not just a photo, but actually record a video of that event, you can do that just by pressing this button here on the corner and doing the emergency video. Basically what it'll do is it'll record a 30 second clip, uh, 10 seconds before you press the button and then 20 seconds after, and then save just that clip for you to make it really easy to access and locate later anything important that's going on ahead of you. So as far as the interface, I actually really like the design here. Makes it easy to access everything you need and they're labeled really nicely so you can see exactly what you need so I'm liking that so far. A quick heads up because this looks like a pretty awesome camera I am going to be giving one of these cameras away to one of my supporters on Patreon. Now as far as the video quality that's obviously one of the most important things out of any dash cam so let's go ahead and start with that and see how the video from this camera looks in a variety of different lighting conditions. Now let's start with driving around during the daytime. Uh, in the daytime, video from this camera looks great. I love the colors that are coming out of it. I love the contrast and the saturation. The exposure looks really good. And it's also really easy to read license plates, which is really important with any dash cam. When you're driving into the sun directly, uh, you may get some flare. I've noticed with this camera, it starts pretty washed out, but the camera adjusts and compensates pretty well. Uh, once it does, you'll be able to see oncoming traffic, even though you're driving into the sun. You can see people that are walking by, and you can generally still read license plates even though the sun is directly ahead of you. You may actually get some reflections in your windshield, but that's more of an issue that uh, any dash cam would face. When things get kind of cloudy outside, again, it looks really good. The exposure is good, the colors look good. There's really nothing to say or point out. I mean, it does a good job in cloudy conditions as well. When you go into tunnels, uh, the white balance shifts may actually take a second or two for the camera to adjust, but it does work well. I have noticed that in the reduced light, it can be tougher to read license plates, but that's pretty true with a lot of dash cams that you'll see. At night, things look pretty good overall as well. When you are stationary, you can see things pretty well. In parking lots, you can see people pretty well that are walking around, assuming there's some street lights to light things up. And you can also read license plates as long as they're lit by street lights or headlights and the angle is just right. Uh, it can be tough to read uh, license plates when you're moving, which is normal. Uh, if there's no street lights or your headlights are not shining in the area, uh, it is pretty hard to see anything. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind as well. It doesn't have the best exposure, I have noticed there are some other cameras that do a better job of pulling out detail from dark areas, but with this camera it does do a pretty decent job. One of the toughest things for this camera is when you're driving on the highway, due to the low light and the vehicle movement and vibration as you're driving around, it can be pretty tough to read license plates. However, uh, when you're moving around more slowly, and especially in the city, it is easier to read license plates. One feature that this camera has is an HDR feature, which is designed to give you better dynamic range and give you more detail in the highlights and in the shadows. However, I'm not a big fan of the implementation of this feature. I've noticed that uh, it can make the colors look kind of weird. And additionally, when you get some exposure changes from dark to light, that exposure shift can actually look a little bit weird. Um, it can be all right when you're sitting stationary, but when you've got movement going on or any sort of exposure shifts, you will get some weird artifacts, and I'm not a big fan of that. And it's for that reason that I think the video quality uh, is better, and it just looks better when you have the feature turned off. So yes, while the feature can be helpful, your video is going to look kind of weird if you're using the HDR feature. So it's for that reason that I think it's best to probably leave that feature off. 
Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the different resolution options of this camera, because it has a fair number of them, and I like this about the camera. You've got your standard 1080p and 30fps, just like most every dash cam nowadays. And at 1080p, 30fps, you can do that with HDR turned on or turned off. HDR is only available at 1080p, 30fps. If you want, you can go down to a lower resolution, 720p, to basically save some space on your memory card. You can do that at 30fps. Or if you want really silky smooth footage, you can do uh, 720p at 60fps. Now, speaking of the higher frame rates, uh, at 1080p, kind of your standard high resolution option, you can do that at 45 FPS as well. That's kind of a weird frame rate. You can't really display 45 FPS on YouTube, for example. Um, but if you want to do some slow-mo, you can actually shoot 1080p 45 FPS. So if you need to ever slow down your footage because something is going on around you, uh, it does help to record the higher frame rate and make the slow-mo look that much better. Now going up to a higher resolution, you've got two different options. The first option, and this is my favorite one, this is the main thing that I run, it's 2304 by 1296 P. Uh, basically it's higher resolution than 1080p, uh, still the same aspect ratio and everything. It's not 4K or anything, this is what they call uh, 2K. So you've got higher resolution than 1080p, um, so more resolution, better information, and more detail. Additionally, if you want to go uh, even wider than that, you can shoot 2560 by 1080. Uh, this is kind of a funky aspect ratio. It's instead of 16 by 9, it's 21 by 9. Basically meaning you're going to see the black bars on the top and the bottom. So if you want to um, focus all the detail on the center of the footage, which is really what your dash cam is mostly going to be interested in recording, and you don't care about recording, you know, the clouds up in space or, uh, you know, your dash or the hood of your car, you can shoot at this resolution and really focus all of the camera's recording capabilities on just the middle. It does look a little bit weird because it's not the traditional aspect ratio that you'll see, but it's a good option as well if you want to go for more high resolution recording. Now the camera itself comes with pretty much everything that you'll need to install and power the camera. You've got the camera itself plus two different types of mounts. You've got a suction cup mount and then you've also got a permanent mount designed to be installed with that 3M double stick tape. It also comes with a memory card. You get a 32 gig micro SD card, which I like a lot. Uh, a lot of manufacturers don't actually include a memory card to basically save a little bit of cash. This one actually does come with a memory card, um, which I like uh, quite a bit. Uh, the camera supports up to a 64 gig card, and in the box it comes with a 32 gig card. Now to power the camera, it comes with a cigarette lighter plug. Uh, that plug has two different ports, one to power your dash cam, and then another one to actually charge your cell phone. It's nice, that cell phone charger actually charges up to two amps, so you can charge your phone nice and quickly. Then to actually wire the camera in, it comes with a nice 12 foot long USB cable. So it plugs into that and then you can run that cable around your car uh, to install it in your dash cam. It also comes with a second USB cable. It's a short six inch cable so that you can plug the dash cam into your computer and uh, access all the footage that way if you don't have a separate memory card reader to just plug the card itself into. Personally, I like just taking the memory card and plugging the memory card into my computer, um, but you also have the option of plugging the dash cam in itself. Another thing that I really like is it comes with some installation equipment to help you actually tuck that power cable behind the trim of your vehicle. That's pretty nice. So it's a nice little touch that they've included to help make sure that you've got a nice, clean looking install in your car. And then finally, it also comes with a nice manual to help you uh, learn about the camera and all the different buttons and features and operation of the camera. Now, taking a look at the camera itself, as you can see, it's got this square-shaped design here. You've got the lens and the microphone here right on the front. Uh, on the side of the camera, you've got the power button, and you've got the micro SD card slot. Uh, on the back, you've got the 2-inch LCD, and you've got all the buttons that we looked at earlier. And then on the other side here, you've got the uh, power cable, so you can plug in your power right there. And then you've got a uh, HDMI port right there, so you can actually plug it into a TV or some other device to have an external video output. And then it's also got a uh, reset button right there on the side. On top of the camera, you've got a nice quick release mount. So if you want to uh, mount and unmount the camera from your car, you can do that really easily. Uh, the power cable is actually plugged into the camera, so you are going to have to plug and unplug the power cable in as well. But it does make it really easy to actually remove the camera from your car and tuck it away if you like. I keep my camera actually mounted behind my rear view mirror, and I like to have the uh, the buttons on the bottom of the camera actually just hanging down underneath my rear view mirror so that I can see them and access them really easily. And that's where I actually keep this dash cam mounted in my car. 
inside the camera, it's actually got a battery and it can record for about half an hour from what I understand. I haven't tested this out, but it can record for half an hour without the power cable actually plugged in, which is how I'm recording right now. That's pretty nice. The camera does not have a GPS chip, so it can't record your speed or where you're driving, but if you don't need that functionality, it's a nice way to save some cash. The camera does not have a Wi-Fi chip, so you can't actually pair it with your phone. However, it does have the two inch LCD here on the back, so it's really easy to point and angle the camera and make sure it's positioned in the way that you want. When you finish driving, uh, the camera will lose power and 15 seconds after it loses power, it will automatically shut off. And I like that extra time. Uh, I went to actually go get my tires rotated the other day and when uh, the tech was actually driving my car into the bay, it was nice because once he got out of the car uh, and he walked away, the camera actually recorded who it was that was uh, driving my car. Nothing happened to my car at all, but I like the added security where if anything did happen, when the guy got out, it would actually record who the driver was if he walked out in front of my car. So that's a nice little touch as well. Now, one of the things about this camera that I do find kind of annoying is the fact that when you start up your car and you shut down your car, the dash cam will play an audio tone and you can't actually disable that. Now it's not super loud or anything and it does kind of fade into the background, but nonetheless it is something that I wish you could disable altogether if you like. Another thing that I don't like is if you don't have a memory card in your camera, the camera will actually tell you on the back of the LCD screen, which is nice if you happen to be looking, but if you're not looking because the camera is actually mounted behind your rearview mirror or whatever, the camera will not play any sort of audio warning to warn you that your camera doesn't have a card and it's not recording anything. A lot of dash cams do this this way, and I really wish it was different. I wanted to actually notify me if I don't have a memory card and my dash cam is not recording for me. So that is something that I wish that they would change. Assuming that you do have a memory card in your camera and it is recording, uh, a minute after you are out driving, the camera LCD will actually shut off for you and kind of black out, but the camera is going to keep recording in the background and you can press any button on the bottom to wake up the LCD. Press that button a second time basically once the LCD is activated and then you can activate the start and stop recording or save and mark this footage or whatever else those buttons do. It doesn't actually do that feature on the very first button press. Additionally, when the camera is recording on the back, there's a little red and blue LED to let you know that the camera is on and it is recording. On the video itself, you have the ability to completely remove all extraneous text if you like, which is awesome. I love that. So you can just get a nice, clean video file. If you want, you can display the date and the time or even some custom text if you want to identify what camera is being operated. Uh, so it's really nice. The text actually looks good. It looks clean. And I like the way the text uh, is displayed on the camera if you want that feature to be there. The time only is displayed in 24 hour mode. You can't do AM and PM if you like. I do wish it had that, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, in between clips, the camera can record in one, three, or five minute increments, and uh, there's no gap in between the video footage, so it's a nice clean job from one clip to the next. With some cameras, there is a little bit of a gap between videos, or there's some overlap. With this one, it's just a nice seamless transition, and I like that. It makes it easier when you're actually editing in post. One issue that I've noticed in terms of reliability is I have noticed sometimes I start up my car and my dash cam doesn't actually automatically power on, and I have to go and manually power it on. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's causing it. I think it's related to the fact that when I'm doing testing and stuff, I'm turning my car on and off a couple times and that can kind of uh, weird out the camera a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it seems like it does turn on, but I have noticed there are some weird situations where the camera actually doesn't record and that is kind of something to be aware of in terms of reliability and, uh, you know, just being certain that your camera is always recording when you need it to. Now in terms of build quality, the camera is plasticky and it does feel a little bit cheap, but not to the point where it would actually cause any issues. Uh, as far as the buttons, they all have a nice tactile feel, nice clicky sound, so it's really easy to tell when you've pressed the buttons. The buttons feel good. Um, as far as the mount itself, I have noticed that when you have it mounted, there is a little bit of flex that's possible in rotation. I have noticed that this looseness made for some extra vibration in the video footage at times. Plus, I got some very noticeable vibrations in the audio itself, which oftentimes ruins the audio for the clip. I contacted the manufacturer about this and they actually sent me a second camera. Uh, this one is actually much more solid. It's not perfect, but I do notice a lot fewer vibrations in the mount here in the newer camera. Because of this, the video is actually more stable when driving, and it does seem like the audio problems have been addressed. 
Now, almost all the sample footage in this review is from the first dash cam, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, this camera also offers some parking mode functionality as well, so you can use it not just when you're driving, but also when you're parked, and it does two different things. Number one, it can sense when somebody hits your car, like a hit and run, and record that for you, and number two, it can detect when somebody's walking by, some suspicious characters or whatever, and record that for you as well. Uh, here's how it works. It's not the greatest implementation, but it does have the feature. Uh, let's talk about parking mode first. The idea is uh, you have to go into the camera settings and manually enable uh, parking mode, and what it does is when you have that enabled, uh, if somebody hits your car, uh, the camera will detect that impact and begin recording. Uh, it will miss that initial impact. It takes about two seconds or so between the impact and the recording to happen. So once it starts recording, it'll just see whatever's going on around you, a car sitting in front of you or whatever. It will not actually see the car backing up towards you and hitting you. Uh, this is something I do see with some other cameras where the cameras are actually recording the whole time and uh, there's a buffer going on and when it detects the impact, it actually pulls from that initial buffer. With this camera, it will miss the initial impact. So two seconds after the hit happens, the camera will wake up and begin recording so you can see the person get out of their car and look at your car or drive away and capture their license plate and that kind of stuff. So you do have that feature. Uh, the camera also has a motion detection feature. So if somebody's walking by in front of your car, or there's motion or whatever going on, the camera can actually record that. It also has the same issue where it does miss the beginning part. It takes about seven seconds or so for uh, the camera to begin recording once it detects the motion. So it will miss the very beginning. Hopefully nothing happens for the first seven seconds or so, but after that, the camera will begin recording. A quick note, if you want to use the parking mode functionality, it's designed to be operated when your car is turned off and it's going to be powered off of your car's uh, battery. And it's for that reason that you may want an accessory like a Power Magic Pro, which actually goes between your camera and your car uh, to monitor your car's battery and make sure that you don't actually drain your car's battery too much. So that's a handy accessory um, that you may want to consider if you are going to be using a uh, parking mode functionality. You can also use a uh, an external battery pack so that you're not relying on your car's battery. Um, Blackview makes one, a couple other manufacturers. So that's a nice accessory as well that you can look into if you want to use the parking mode functionality. So yes, the camera has it. Uh, no, it's not the greatest implementation ever um, and yes it is a manual feature with some other cameras they have a GPS chip built in uh, this camera does not the GPS chip is really handy because the car can sense you know uh, when you're parked and stationary for a while and automatically switch into parking mode then once you resume driving again it automatically switches back into normal driving mode and I find that super super helpful because to have to manually go in and change between driving and parking mode every time Honestly, number one, that's gonna be a pain in the butt, and number two, you're probably gonna forget. So I wish it could do it automatically with this camera, uh, it doesn't. So that is something to keep in mind as well uh, if you wanna use the parking mode functionality. The camera comes with a one-year warranty. Additionally, if you register it on their website, you get another six months of warranty. So basically, a year and a half of warranty is available with this guy. Uh, full disclosure, Tautronics did send me this dash cam for free for review purposes. Uh, I do get to keep it once I'm done, but I'm not being compensated in any other way. Uh, I basically flat out told him, like, yeah, you can send me the camera, but I'm getting a fair number. And if it's not a good camera, I don't want to even bother reviewing it. You know, if it's a good camera, yeah, I'll be happy to. And I've been pretty impressed with this one, and it's for that reason uh, that I decided to go ahead and review this camera and share the review with you guys. So if you like it and you want to purchase one, I'm going to put a link down in the video description to where you can pick one up on Amazon. It is an affiliate link and by buying through that link, it does support me and my channel and help me do more of these dash cam review videos for you guys. So if you're curious about more information, feel free to ask down in the uh, comment area below. Uh, if it's been a while since I posted this video, I'm probably going to forget a lot of the details, but if you're watching this pretty recently after I posted it, feel free to ask and I can look anything up or, you know, it's all fresh in my mind, so I'll be happy to answer it down there. Uh, if you if you want more information about any of the other dash cams that I've reviewed, or if you want to see my compilation of some of my best dash cams that I've reviewed so far, uh, click that link down in the video description as well, and I'm going to show you more information about all of my different dash cams at different price points with different feature sets. So if you want maybe something less expensive, or if you uh, want a camera with more bells and whistles like GPS or Wi-Fi or maybe dual dash cams front and rear, anything like that, uh, take a look down in the video description, vortexradar.com slash dash cams, and that'll give you more information and show you my top picks as far as all the different dash cams that I've reviewed so far. So uh, thanks so much for watching this. I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.